just so grateful for your presence today and we know that you looked down from eternity and determined that you would bless us this day so God we assembled here in your presence to receive that blessing so we thank you for it. we thank you for our healing our deliverance God we thank you for instructing us in our right mind. God, giving us the ability to not only hear, but to receive. We give you thanks for it. We thank you now, God, for establishing us in right relationship, both with you and with our brothers and our sisters. And God, we thank you for it. Thank you now for every promise being fulfilled, every purpose being complete, and God, for every soul being made merry. Now we give you praise for these in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Such a wonderful blessing to, to wake up every morning knowing that God is still in charge. <laughs> and that he's right there to meet every conceivable need that we have. Now today, uh, I want you to go with me to the book of Romans chapter 12. This is going to be difficult, okay? Somebody said, why you tell us that ahead of time? Because you, I told you this ahead of time because this is going to be difficult. <laughs> Two verses, verses 9 and 10. The Bible says, let love be without hypocrisy, abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor, giving preference to one another. Now, I want to give you this thought, and you'll, as we go through, you'll see what I'm talking about. The title is Practical Love. Amen. Not the kind you have. Talking about love you can use. Huh? Practical love. Love you can do something with. Instead of talking about it all the time. Amen. Talking about practical love. Love that gives. Amen. And not restrains. Amen. Practical love. Love that accomplishes a purpose. Amen. And not hinders. Yes. Amen. Yes. You be seated. Practical love. And back in the day when I was a young man, there used to be a song on the radio that said, I know something about love. And as I got older, what I found out is that nobody knows anything about love. Now, seriously, can we talk now? <laughs> when we talk about love, everybody has a concept of what they think love is. And most people don't know what it is. And the worst place to demonstrate it is in church. Because Christians know less about love. Okay, y'all think I'm being ugly. Hold on, hold on. <clears throat> because we have an idea of what love should be, but we have a problem with the practice of it. Because we can be nice to you for two hours a day. It's the mother 22. That's a problem for us. We can sit and smile and have a great time and go home and talk about you at the dinner table. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't wait that long. On the way to the car, we talk about how sorry you are. That's because we're Christians and we know love. <laughs> Is he just being ugly this morning? No, this is my normal face. Uh, <laughs> you didn't get that. Anyway, what I'm trying to tell you is this, is that most of us have 
a poor concept of what love is. The Bible says that God is love. Yes. God is love. And the only way that we know love is that we have to know God. Yes. And the Bible says this, is that God is love and he was so in love with us that he decided to let us see what real love looks like. The Bible says that what he did is he sent his only son to be the express image of who he is. So if we wanted to know love, then we needed to know Jesus. Amen. 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 Now, here's what I, I submit to you, that the Bible teaches us in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. The Bible says this, he says, uh, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and not of yourselves, it is a gift from God. Now, we've been talking to you about gifts, and the Bible says that all the gifts work by love, Romans chapter 5, says that, that all the gifts work by love. So if you can't love, you can't exercise a gift. And if you can't exercise your gift, then you cannot function in the body of Christ. We're still together. So the Bible says then, it is by grace. And when the Bible says here, grace, now I want you to think about grace this, this, this way. He says it is by God's immutability. What does that word mean? He don't change. Okay. <laughs> so God says in the beginning that I've got to find a way to show you how much I love you. And he did not change throughout history. He maintained that stance that he loves you so much that he's going to bring you to a place of deliverance. Amen. So the Bible says it is by his immutability, come on, Amen. that through your belief, his, his revelation of himself to you, that you become saved. Amen. Now here's what God said, if I show you enough of me, you'll want me. Amen. Huh? <laughs> See, that's what I used to do back in the day when I was coating. <clears throat> See, I showed her so much stuff. So what I did is I limited everybody's choices. Y'all ain't listening to me. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm going somewhere. Grace is about choice. Listen, law is about bondage. If you're in a relationship that's not mutual, then somebody controls it. And if somebody's controlling, that's bondage. But if you have the freedom to choose, then once you make your choice, it's a settled issue. Come on, y'all Y'all don't remember when you were courting? Oh, I know. I understand. There must have been a lot of frogs out there. You get that later. <laughs> Come on. I told you this was going to be difficult. Not in the way you thought, though. It's not going to be hard to understand. Now, the Bible is really... Uh, I, I was going to say strange, but the Bible tells us a lot about love. Now, here's the problem. It's when you get to the New Testament and we start to talk about love. We all understand the principle of agape. That's God's love. God is love. He shows it to us. He gives it to us. He expects to give it back, get it back from us. The only place that it is used uh, uh, when it's going back the other direction is Romans 8.28. The Bible says in Romans 8.28, that uh, we know that all things work together for good for, it, for those who love God, who have the uh, relationship with God. And that's what he's talking about, who love God, who have a relationship. So we're talking about a love relationship. Now, here's, here's the, where we run into problems: is that we all say that we're Christians, we're saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost. And we have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Do you really? Come on, do, do you really? Because any personal relationship means that we know each other. If you know me, 
based only on what you have learned in the written word, you don't know me. And we're good at that. See, what we know is we know a symbolic Jesus. And we love that symbolic Jesus. That's why we can put a cross around our neck. And, you know, whenever we get ready to, to pray, we kiss the cross. And like we did. Like, what is that? But we have all these symbols that we call a relationship to Christ. You know, the preacher dressed a certain way. We put on a robe because we want you to see the symbol. Huh? That's why in Galatians chapter five, <clears throat> excuse me, in Galatians chapter five, the Bible teaches us. Well, turn there for just a minute. <clears throat> Man, I'm losing what little voice I have. I'm going to be, be a little speedier. Ah, Y'all like that, right? <laughs> the Bible says here, stand fast, therefore, with the liberty uh, by which Christ has made you free and don't be entangled with the yoke of bondage again. I'm speeding it up for you. And here's what he says here uh, in verse four. You have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by the law, you've fallen from grace. Mm. He says, for uh, through the spirit, though the spirit, excuse me, eagerly waits for uh, the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus, neither is circumcision nor uncircumcision uh, avail of anything but faith working through love. So he says a symbol doesn't work. A symbol is a, is a negative connotation of who Christ is. And if I can only love you because of this, then I don't really love you because I don't know you. If I have to have an outward symbol, and he says circumcision is that outward symbol. If I have to have something that lets you know that I'm a Christian, then that means that I really don't know Jesus. Are y'all? And see, we have this way of talking and walking, you know, for God so loved the world. Sounds really deep. But when we say it that way, it doesn't have any meaning because it's absent of relationship. And you can't say that you have a practical form of love if you have no relationship. Amen. And see, we do this in our, our, our society. We throw the word around, you know, oh, I love chicken. I love cake. I love that car. I love that dress. I love that. Now, which love are we talking about? So when we look in the Bible, we find that the agape is the God kind of love. Then I gave you some other things over the past few months. Uh, we talked to you about uh, Philadelphia, which is brotherly love. Storge, which is what? Family love. Okay. <laughs> Don't be asking questions, right? Okay. <laughs> and then I even threw in one I called it Cornelia, remember? We talked about fellowship, that being a form of love. Uh, the Bible says in Acts chapter 2 that, that they were all in one place. They had everything common. Amen. And they gave to each other as they had need. Amen. That's koinonia. Yes. So we got all these forms of love. Now you notice that in the New Testament, the one form of love that is not mentioned, or if it's mentioned at all, it's kind of, okay. is eros. Sensual love. But that's the only kind we know about. Amen. How'd that happen? Because that's not used in our relationship to Christ. Amen. Now y'all looking at me strange. Look it up for yourself and see where you find in the New Testament it talks about sensual love. But every one of us has been a victim of that. And yet we know nothing about it. Oh, look at you now. Oh, I told you it was going to be difficult, didn't I? So he need to stop. I'm going to stop. But when I finish this, when I'm going to stop. <clears throat> So 
So the kinds of love that we really know about are the kinds of love that are uh, practical, which is why I say you should know more about this than anything. But the thing that we really we really focus on is sensual. Because you're always talking about your feelings. <laughs> Why? Not, not, somebody said, whoa. <laughs> Why? Because we all have feelings, and feelings always change. Feelings don't remain the same. The only times feeling are stag- stag- feelings are stagnant is when you're dead. And then what you feel is what? Nothing. Nothing. Amen. So why do you put so much emphasis on the feeling part rather than the healing part? Amen. Amen. See, love should be a relationship. A, re- a relationship means that there's two parts to it. If you say I have a personal relationship with Christ, okay, I expect you to do some things and he expects me to do something. What's your part? Okay. Excuse me. Jesus said, I don't give you any new commandment. He started out by saying a a, a new commandment I give you. And then he says, now I don't have to give you a new. He says that the commandment is that you love one another. Come on. As I have loved you. Love one another as I have loved you. You and how did he love us? Okay, here's how we're gonna do this. I'm gonna run through something here. I think I got some graphs and charts and some figures and no, I'm (laughs) teasing. I do though. (laughs) In the beginning, the Bible says that Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden. They had. Stay with me now. Adam and Eve had a personal relationship with God. What does that mean? That means that they were able to think a thought and God responded. Why? Because Adam and Eve and God were right? And then sin came. When sin came, y'all got that graph now? (laughs) There was a separation between God and his people. Oh, (laughs) I can't see it. That's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. (laughs) That's the right one. There's a separation. <laughs> Gonna be hard to teach this, right? I need some numbers on there or something. I don't know. There's a separation between God and his people. Sin always brings a separation. So throughout history, God began to tell us what the plan was for a reconnection. You all remember the plan? Okay, let me help you a little bit. He started in Genesis and he said the seed of the woman. That was the first part of the plan. And then he went out through history and the prophets began to talk about this, this Jesus that was coming. You know, the Bible says that he would be called Jesus because he would be our savior, that he would be Emmanuel, that he would be God with us. That same uh, uh, prophecy tells us that uh, uh, that by because of the stripes that were going to be applied to his body at some point in time, we would all be healed. Amen. Amen. The same Prophecy goes even further. In Ezekiel, he tells us that uh, man can't be saved or changed unless the man becomes a new spirit. Because man's old spirit was tainted with sin. Ezekiel 37. The Bible says then, then in order for us to have a personal relationship with Christ, we have to have a new spirit. What is he saying? Our spirit, the spirit of man, must be able to connect with the spirit of God. 
And if our spirit cannot connect with the spirit of God, then we're going to have a problem. Now, the, the, the thing that you're looking at right there is one off. Go back. OK, Jesus then connects us. Amen. The Bible says he's the bridge. He connects his people so we can have that relationship. Amen. But remember what I told you about relationships and having any kind of relationship. You still have to have the ability to make choices. <clears throat> and the way we are today in our society, uh, we make our own choices. Now, bring that next graphic up with the chair, but not, not the first one, but the, set, the other one. The other one. The other one. No. The other one with the chair. <laughs> the other one. All right. Fortunately for you all, I save everything. I sure don't want you to be out there lost. And you're never going to see this on my piece of paper. <laughs> it's called a self-directed life. That seat has an S on it, which signifies self. And the cross is outside of it. Oh, take, take, take. Oh, wow. Wow. So you want something done right? I don't throw nothing away. <laughs> so when <laughs> what most of us do is we sit on the throne of our lives without Christ, even though he's been made available to us. Remember what I just said now? He's been made available <clears throat> But we sit on the throne and we make our own decisions. Amen. Now, let's be honest today, because that's why I say this is going to be difficult. Most decisions we make, we make a mistake. Amen. And then we go to Christ and ask him to. Amen. And that's simply because we do not have that personal relationship. Now we can go. <laughs> Are y'all having fun yet? That chair, they just can't get that chair back up again. One more time. There we go. You know what? I should teach them the lesson and then they would understand where I was going and they would, right? Wouldn't be, wouldn't be nearly as much fun if, if they already knew, right? <laughs> so when we put Christ on the throne and we're seated at his feet, we understand what our relationship is to him. Now, if Christ is in me and I am in him, then I have now been restored to the original relationship where I can have a personal relationship with Christ. And that relationship now connects me to the original personal relationship with God. Are we seeing that? But in order for any of this to work, I have to make a choice. And the first choice I have to make is to accept Jesus. If I don't accept the work that he did, if I don't believe now in John chapter one, the Bible says that uh, Jesus came into the world and the world didn't even recognize him. Huh? He was the light and people preferred darkness to light. So I'm telling you now that when we have our, quote, relationships, our personal relationships with Christ, our personal relationships are based on all of those things other than agape. Amen. We love our families. Oh, yeah, we do. Our brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. our church family. 
but we don't love them the same way that we love God or the same way God loves us. So it is not a practical love because it cannot advance the kingdom. Wants more proof, right? I'm glad you asked me. We will go further to advance a family member than we will a brother or sister in the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Hmm? Are y'all listening to me? At some point in time, we become exasperated with our fellow believers. And we have this mentality, well, by now, you ought to. When the truth of the matter is, now come on, say it with me. The truth of the matter is, you haven't even begun until you reach you ought to. Y'all didn't, didn't get that. The stuff that you do every day is just stuff that we should do every day for everybody. But when you get to the point saying, nah, I've done all I'm going to do, I ain't doing no more. That's the point that you begin to do something. Oh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I <clears throat> because in our minds, we know when we reached our limit. But we serve a God that doesn't have any. He doesn't know, he doesn't know you, that, that we're at the end. Because he's already seen the end. He said, no, nah, he ain't finished yet. <laughs> now, can I tell you something? Because I don't want you feeling bad. Where am I at time-wise, y'all? <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. But anyway... <laughs> I don't want to get into, oh, I heard that. I, I don't want to get into too much that I can't finish, but, but here's what I'm saying. I'm saying that uh, when it comes to, to, to our relationship to Christ and what, we, what he expects from us and what we expect from him, what we, the point that we, we, we fail to make is this, is that no one person can be everything to everybody. And that's why we get weary in well-doing. Now, you know, in, 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 uh, in the world system, they always say it takes the village. Well, in the Bible, it does, too. It really does. Now, let me back up and say this, because, again, I don't, I, I, I don't want to get too deep. And then I lose you. I have already lost. Oh. Okay. Y'all still look like you still. <laughs> Here's the situation. The Bible says that we're to love one another. The Bible says that you love your neighbor as yourself. Now, when you look at uh, 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 what Leviticus says in Leviticus 19 and 18, and then you see what Jesus says uh, about loving your neighbor as yourself. Here's what we need to learn is that when the Bible commits itself to love in the New Testament, it fulfilled Leviticus from the Old Testament, thus making love now an action and not a law. So it's no longer necessary for me to love my neighbor because the Bible says so. But now I love my neighbor because I know how to love. Amen. Love then becomes an action and because it is now uh, a part of who I am, I love naturally. Amen. I love, and I know this is going to be hard here, but stay with me. I love without feeling. Look at y'all. Oh, no, he didn't say that. 
All right, let me talk to the mamas in here. Mamas, y'all had a baby? Huh? Hmm? How do you feel when little baby poops all over the floor and everything, all over the stuff? Do you stop and talk about your feelings? I'm talking to mamas. <laughs> you don't give it a second thought. You do what you do out of love. No feeling. Because your love is an action. Uh -oh. And see, we have to learn how to model that kind of love. See, because you are part of this body, because we're all Christians, we're all saints, then there's a certain amount of, of, of respect I give you as a believer. And what does that mean by respect? And I use the term respect. That's not what I'm really looking for. I don't know a word to say relationship, but, but I, I accept you on the basis of your relationship to Christ. That's how I accept you. Now, do you always behave that way? No. And even though, listen, my feelings, which may not be love, may be anger. I may be upset. But my action is love. Amen. Amen. See, this is what practical love really is. It's when I can show you the, the action without having to give you the, uh, the 30 minute lecture about how I feel about it. See, <laughs> in marriage they have, like, you know, they say there's compassion, there's communication, mm -hmm. And then you get to the, what folks call it, the M&Ms. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that's the being able to, to uh, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm in church, I'm in church, I'm in church, I'm in church. <laughs> it's the marriage part and the money part. Whenever the money part conflicts with the marriage part, then the marriage part suffers. And why is that? It's because the two of you don't have a personal relationship. You have a contractual relationship. Because the marriage part says, I love you in spite of the contractual says, I love you until you reach this point. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I'm ready to quit. I'm going, <laughs> I'm going up here and mind my own business because I can feel you. And it ain't pretty. Now, look, I'm just a messenger. All I'm trying to tell you is that, is that here, here, here's, look, here's the punchline. I gave it to you in scripture. It says, love must be without hypocrisy. What does that mean? That means that when people come to church, they put on their mask. That's what a hypocrite is. You put on your church face and you do your church thing. The Bible says that you are not to love with the mask on. Amen. You are to love in sincerity. Sincerity means simplicity. It means that I don't have to be phony with you because you are family. 
See, the moment we stop lying to one another, we're going to see a church that's delivered. You hear what I said to you? I said you're going to see a church that's delivered. When you stop acting like you okay with brother so-and-so and sister so-and-so, when you know you can't stand them. Somebody say, well, how am I going to get to the place that I, I get to stand them then? <laughs> now, you ain't going to like this, but I, I need to help you. You need to find out what's in you. That's creating the problem. It's not, it, it's not them. Huh? I have a good friend that always says this. Have you not just met me? Which means that, listen, unless, unless you entered into a relationship prematurely, then you have no reason to dislike the person that you are currently in a relationship with. Amen. Now, maybe I didn't explain that good enough. But I got a minute or two, so I'm going to do it. <laughs> you know, in, in marriage counseling, I always tell people, I don't really want to know how much you love this person, because that don't, ma don't matter to me. Mm -hmm. What I want to know is how you fight. Oh, See, because if, if we don't know how to fight, then we can't resolve a whole lot of issues. No, I ain't talking about that fake stuff. Mm -hmm. it, it's all right. It, it, it's all right. Oh, oh he'll get better. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, well, we just going through some. Shut up. <laughs> no. Now, I'm talking about marriage, but I'm talking about relationships here in church. Let's, can, can I just? If we love each other with the love of God, if we have the Christ-like kind of love, then there are some issues that we don't, you know, we don't sit well with us. Amen. So we got to be able to say that to the person. Right. You know what? I don't like it when you do so and so and so. Amen. Now, wait, wait now. Let me finish. Let me finish before y'all, because y'all want to, you thought that was an excuse to go. In front. That is not, that is not an excuse to confront anybody. What I am saying to you is, I need to know why you feel that way. Now, here's what I need you to understand if it's real love. We may never resolve that issue. You know why? Because I'm not Sister McLemore. I'm not her. I'm never going to be her. Ever. And no matter how much we talk to one another, no matter how many times we go to dinner, no matter how many times we hang out in church, we're never going to be the same person Amen. because she's an individual and Amen. I'm an individual. Amen. And there may be some stuff about her that I just don't like. Amen. Just do not like. So now I have to make a decision. Remember what I said? This is about choice. I have to make a decision. I have to make a decision. Do I accept her and that aberrant behavior? No, not my calling. <laughs> or do I move on to Sister Jones? You, you follow what I'm saying? I still love her. But I don't like her much. And see, y'all had that problem to it's twisted where y'all think you gotta love and like everybody. I ain't got to like you. I do have to love you. Yeah. I'm just going to pretend I didn't. <laughs> no, seriously. You think, you, you think that loving is liking. I do not like shots, but I do take them quite frequently. Hmm? In my life, I've had a few surgeries. I didn't like it, but I know I needed it. Y'all ain't with me. Amen. Come on. Even now at my age, I take certain medication. I don't like taking medicine. 
But you know what? I know that I need it. So I like taking it because I like staying here. Now, what is, the, what is the preacher trying to say? I'm trying to say that in church, you got, you got it twisted when it comes to practical love. It ain't about how I feel about you. It's not how I feel about you. It's a good thing if I feel good about you. But if I don't feel good about you, I still love you. And I'm going to do the same thing for you if I don't, lo- don't like you as if I love you. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? If I'm going to loan you $10, I'm going to loan you $10 based on the fact that I think you need $10 and I got $10. Huh? But if I get to got to hear the, the lecture, either way, that's a problem for me. You might want to go ask somebody else. Now it's different if, if it's if it's like my children. I tell them my money comes with a lecture. So you 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 don't have to ask me for no money. You pull out my wallet on the yeah, every bill says lecture, lecture. No, I, I'm, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm, <laughs> but they, they pretty much know that that's, you know, lecture goes with. And they also know that I have banking hours. Y'all don't know what that means, right? Okay. At five o'clock, the bank is closed. You had to find it someplace else. You you had to find a bank that's open. (laughs) Yeah. But do you understand the principle I'm trying to make? Is that when it comes to to our relationship to one another, if it's practical love, if it's if it's love we can use, if it's love that advances the kingdom, Mm -hmm. it's not about how I feel about you, it or them. It's about what's best for the kingdom. Now, let me close real fast because because I'm uh, uh, well, I might have to add some more to it next week anyway. But anyway. Uh, Let me tell you this. Here's what what I'm trying to get into your understanding is that if we're going to operate in practical love, then there are some things that we know must happen in order to advance the kingdom, which means the body has to be able to function as a whole. The parts of the body have to be united in order for the body to advance. If I take my arm and put it over in my office and take my other arm and put it over in the hospitality room, then I'm not going to be able to function as a person with arms. Now, that goes back to what we read to you in Galatians chapter uh, five when it talks about being fallen from grace. And a lot of us believe that because sin comes comes into our life. Listen at this very carefully. When sin comes into our saved life, let me say it one more time. When sin comes into our saved life, we believe that we have fallen from grace. Amen. And fallen from grace simply means this. It means that I am no longer operating in that sphere of grace. Okay. Okay. Grace is sitting right here. I I gave you a bad one. I'm going to give you a good one. Grace is sitting right here. Which means that you can take advantage of the grace of God at any point in your life. And when do you need that grace the most? When I'm at my worst. Now, if you move away from grace, move over a seat. The Bible says you have fallen from grace. Here's how we say it in the world. You've fallen off the wagon. You are no longer in a position to be reached or touched by grace. 
because you moved out of that arena of grace. How do I get restored? I just move back. Y'all see this? This is the part of that love that we're missing. That's just simple step. When I find myself behaving unseemly as a Christian, not loving practically, then I need to get back under grace so that I can begin to function again. If the body is not whole, it doesn't function. If it doesn't function, then there's no active love here so that the kingdom moves. Amen. Now, if all the gifts work by love, mm -hmm. then which one am I missing? Amen. All of them. Amen. Amen. Why do you think we took so much time to give you all that list of Y'all with me? I can't minister. I can't prophesy. I can't, I can't lead. I can't give. Uh, I can't give a word. There's a whole lot of stuff I can't do because I have fallen from grace. Amen. And most of the time I've done it mentally. Amen. And what I've done is I decided I don't like you no more. But grace is still there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says this, and, and I'm going to close with this. It says that you need to come running. Amen. The throne of grace. Mm -hmm. That you can receive mercy. Y'all. So I'm closing by telling you this. If you're not one of those people who have practical love, you've loved in spite of however people treat you or what have you. If you're one of those kind of people that loves no matter what goes on, praise God for you. Praise God for you. <laughs> praise God for you. But if you like the rest of us, then I suggest you get up on your feet about now. <laughs> so now at this moment, we are extending you the same opportunity that's being extended to those who are here in the sanctuary. We want to offer you that same chance at eternal life. We want to offer you Jesus. <laughs> I mean, what better gift can we give than the gift of Jesus? Listen, uh, it's a simple thing to obtain. It's as simple as ABC. First, admit that you're a sinner. Secondly, believe that Christ died for your sins. And thirdly, confess that he is Lord over your life. If I'm talking to you, if this is for you, listen, I want you to join me in this simple prayer. It will change your life forever. You will never be the same from this point on, okay? Let's do it. Here we go. Repeat after me, say, Father, Forgive me, a sinner. I have missed the mark and I have fallen short. But I thank you that you sent your son Jesus to die for me. I thank you that he shed his precious blood for me. I thank you that he took back the keys to death, hell, and the grave and got up with all power in his hand. Come into my heart. Clean me up. Remove anything that's not like you. Thank you for that. So now, I confess with my mouth, with I believe in my heart, that when Jesus was raised from the dead, I am saved. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, family. 
you are now an official member of the kingdom of God. We are so excited for you. The angels in heaven are rejoicing on your behalf. I like to say they're throwing a block party in your honor. You will never be the same. You have made the single greatest decision that you could ever make in your life. And we are so proud of you. We are so excited for you. And we are rooting for you. We are cheering you on. Listen, if you prayed that prayer with us today, do me a favor and text the word saved to the number here, 252 627 nine nine zero zero again text the word saved to two five two six two seven ninety nine hundred we don't want to spam you we don't want to bug you but we do want to share uh, a devotional with you that will help solidify your faith journey we want to connect with you so we can pray with you because this journey is not meant to be walked alone it's meant to be walked with community even jesus when he walked the earth he didn't walk it alone he had community he had the disciples that were gathered around him people from all walks of life but they had one goal and that was to please the father so listen we want to be that for you until you find a church home where you can get stable that's what we want to be for you we're not trying to grow our ministry listen if you come here and you don't like it we'll refer you someplace else that suits your needs because we're not trying to have a bigger church we're trying to grow the church the body of christ that's what it's all about so listen if we don't work for you that's okay we'll help you find someplace that does work for you if you're not in this area let us know hey i'm having a hard time trying to find a church in this city and we'll do the research and we'll help you find a church that will suit what uh what you're looking for when it comes to a community of believers surrounding you okay all right guys listen my time is up i thank you for joining us today we pray that you got something out of this service that it ministered to you on some level um listen guys you guys go out you have an amazing week and just in case your week is not so amazing make sure it has an amazing you and until we get together again god bless you we love you and we can't wait to see you next time